Hello, my name is Colin McNaughton. I'm a technical marketer for Ansible Automation Platform, and today I'm providing a short update to how subscription management is being implemented for different components of the Ansible Automation Platform. Our first topic of discussion today is the deprecation of the old traditional license and a full switch to Red Hat subscription management platform. With the release of Ansible Automation Platform 1.2, we're now completely shifting away from license keys that had been used for activation of Ansible Automation Platform clusters. We've worked to address the same use cases that the traditional licensing model accounted for now implemented in Red Hat subscription management. The existing Red Hat subscription management platform delivers the ability to display a single interface for reviewing all Red Hat subscriptions, contract numbers, and key dates. By moving Ansible Automation Platform to the Red Hat subscription management platform, we're able to take advantage of this reporting and create a unified Red Hat portfolio management solution. As we've switched to the common Red Hat subscription management platform, we now have three ways to apply the subscription to the platform components. These three different methods just vary by use case. The first use case is the simplest. For Ansible Automation Platform clusters that have direct access to the Red Hat customer portal, Automation Platform administrators are able to simply enter their customer portal credentials and select the subscription to apply to that environment. The second use case is for organizations operating in a Red Hat satellite environment. These are typically disconnected environments where a Red Hat satellite server provides subscription management and software repositories to client systems that do not have direct access to the customer portal. The subscription should first be allocated to a satellite manifest. Next, the automation platform should be configured to point to the Red Hat satellite as the upstream for subscriptions management and patching. And finally, the Automation Platform Administrator simply enters their satellite credentials in order to consume the appropriate subscription and activate the Automation Platform. The third use case is for disconnected activations of the Ansible Automation Platform without the presence of a Red Hat satellite server. This entails first visiting the customer portal, creating a new subscription allocation, attaching the correct subscription, downloading the manifest archive, and importing this archive using the Automation Platform web user interface. It's important to note here, there's no need to extract the archive generated. Import the archive just as it was downloaded to the workstation it was generated from. This process is required upon upgrading to the Ansible Automation Platform 1.2 release. Next up is subscribing the private Automation Hub. This is a new addition to the Ansible Automation Platform installer, which now supports installing Private Automation Hub on an on-premises Red Hat Enterprise Linux node. These steps must be performed before running the Ansible Automation Platform installer. Now, this process will differ depending on whether Private Automation Hub is being installed on a node that has direct access to the Red Hat customer portal, or if the environment is managed by a Red Hat satellite server. Either way, from the command line, this process should be very similar. On the private Automation Hub node, register the rel host, attach the Ansible Automation Platform subscription by pool ID, and now the installer can resolve the software sources necessary to complete the installation. An important note here, only the Private Automation Hub node needs to be subscribed using the Ansible Automation Platform subscription. I hope this helps. Check the description for links to supporting documentation. And thank you for watching.